This lecture introduces the concepts of consumer surplus value and producer surplus value. Most textbooks refer to these concepts as consumer surplus and producer surplus. But I like to add the word value to remind that it is surplus value that the consumer or the producer happens to be getting. So what exactly is consumer surplus value? It is, as the name implies, surplus value that a consumer obtains. For instance, for the demand given by Q equals 800 minus 100P, and the supply equation given by Q equals 100P, at a price of 4, which happens to be the equilibrium price, we can say that every consumer who is currently purchasing the product for 4, who thinks the product is worth at least four, that consumer is earning surplus value. For example, the consumer who believes it is worth five dollars but ends up paying the market equilibrium price of said to obtain one dollar of surplus value. That consumer obtained for four dollars a product he thinks is worth five dollars. The same argument can be made for any value higher than four subjectively to the consumer. Any value higher than 4 yields surplus value to the consumer. If you pay a price that is below what you are willing to pay, the difference between the price you are willing to pay and the price you actually pay is the definition of surplus value to the consumer or consumer surplus value, also known as consumer surplus. It is the net benefit the consumer gets beyond what he or she pays for. Analogously, we can talk about producer surplus value. This is surplus value to the producer beyond what he or she spends to acquire or produce that unit of the product. So if the marginal cost of production is three, say, and the equilibrium selling price is four, this would mean that on the units that cost three to produce, the seller is obtaining one dollar's worth of surplus value we can approximately call surplus value profit. Technically, it is the profit that is left over after you subtract the variable cost from the revenue. We will use the term profit here loosely with the caveat that it is not overall profit, but it is revenue minus variable cost. Our question asks us to determine the consumer surplus value and the producer surplus value at equilibrium price. Economists approximate consumer surplus value by the triangular area under the demand curve and above the price, the equilibrium price at which we are operating. In the case of the price of four, the consumer surplus value would be the triangle from 8 to 4 on the price axis and 0 to 400 on the quantity axis. Recall the area of a triangle is given by the formula half base times height, so we have 1 half of 4 times 400, which is 2 times 400 equals a value of 800. Again, we say that the producer surplus value is the difference between the price the seller actually earns and the marginal cost of having that product produced or supplied. The supply curve represents the marginal cost of production for a competitive scenario. If we accept this idea that the supply curve is some aggregate marginal cost curve, then we will determine that the producer's surplus value is the area above the supply curve and below the price at which we are selling this product. With an equilibrium price of 4, therefore, we determine the producer surplus value as the area defined by the equilibrium price of 4, the supply curve, and the vertical axis between 0 and 4. The triangle gives an area of half base times height, and the height is 4, half of the height is 2, and the base, which is on the top of this triangle, the horizontal portion, is 400 so that the area of producer surplus value is one half four times 400 or two times 400 equals 800. So we have consumer surplus value and producer surplus value both at a value of 800. Let us return to the original set of equations. 
were asked to determine the CSV and PSV at a price of 6. At a price of 6, the consumer surplus value is a smaller triangle because the price they're paying is 6, and the triangle under the demand curve is a smaller triangle with a height from 6 to 8 and a base of 200. So a half of 2 is 1, a half of 2 times 200 gives us an area of 200. The consumer surplus value is therefore 200. The producer surplus value here is more interesting. It turns out to be a trapezoid defined by the supply curve and uh, the vertical axis, the price of 6, and the quantity of 200. The area of a trapezoid can be split into a rectangle and a triangle. If you don't know the formula for a trapezoid, you're just adding a triangle to a rectangle. The formula for a trapezoid is one-half base times the sum of the parallel sides. In this case, the parallel sides sum to 6 on the vertical axis and 4 between the demand and supply curve. So that gives us a sum of 10. One-half of 10 is 5. The base is 200. So we have 5 times 200 and that gives us a producer surplus value of 1000. So the PSV is 1000, the CSV is 200, so the total surplus value is 1000 plus 200, the sum of PSV and CSV equals 1200. Recall that at a price of 4, the total surplus value was 1600. So we note that when the price goes from 4 to 6, the producer surplus value increases from 800 to 1,000. The consumer surplus value decreases from 800 to 200. Producer surplus value is therefore increasing by 200. Consumer surplus value is decreasing by 600. So the change in the total surplus value is negative 400. 1200 minus 1600. The third part of our original question asks us to determine the consumer surplus value and producer surplus value at a price of 2. If the supplier were to charge a price of 2, the supply curve suggests that the supplier would supply 200 units. Consumers, however, would be willing to pay a price of 6 for these 200 units according to the demand curve. Consumers can purchase the product for a price of 2, it means that the consumers are getting a lot more surplus value because something they think is worth at least 6 at the margin is being sold for 2. The trapezoid for consumer surplus value in this case would have the two parallel sides, the base of 200 and uh, the height, the two lengths would be 6 plus 4 is 10. So we have a half of 10 times 200, and the consumer surplus value would be 1,000. The producer surplus value is 200, one half of the base times height. So we get a producer surplus value of 200, consumer surplus value of 1,000, for a total surplus value of 1,200. This is equivalent to the problem when the price was 6, except now that the producer surplus value is the 200, whereas the consumer surplus value was 200. The consumer surplus value is now 1,000, these two variants of the problem. So we see that when 200 units are supplied, we lose $400 worth of value, total surplus value. Let's consider a second country that can supply the excess demand at a price of 2. The distance between the demand and supply at a price of 2 gives us an excess demand of 400, the demand being 600 and the domestic suppliers supplying 200. So we get a large triangle for the consumer surplus value with a base of 600 and a height from 2 to 8, which is 6, so the area is 1 half of 6 times 600, which is 3 times 600, so we get 1800. Compared to the price of 4, 
the consumer surplus value has increased. Producer surplus value is again 200. So we get 1800 plus 200, or total surplus value of 2000. 1800 for consumer surplus value and 200 for producer surplus value. If you look at the triangle under the equilibrium between the demand and supply curve, that is how the total surplus value changes, bounded below by the price of 2. So the height from 2 to 4 is 2, and the base of the triangle runs from 200 to 600. A half of 2 times 400 is 400. So the increase in the total surplus value is from 1600 to 2000. The triangle under the demand curve has an area of 400. We can now analyze the situation where the price is 6. And assuming that our suppliers can sell their excess supply at a price of 6 to another country, the excess supply would be 400 from 200 to 600. The producer surplus value will then increase because of this second market. The total surplus value will increase by the triangular area between the demand and supply curve bounded by a price of 6 and the intersection of 4. The area of that triangle is from 200 to 600. The base is 400, the height is 2. Again, one half of 2 times 400 is 400. So the total surplus value will increase by 400. Alternatively, the total surplus value rises from 1600 to 2000. In this scenario, the price of 2 yields imports and uh, the price of 6 we are assuming will yield exports. Notice that domestic customers are the beneficiaries when we import. Domestic producers are the beneficiaries when we export at a price of 6. Domestic producers would like to know that there is a second country available to sell their surplus to, but domestic consumers will be hurt by this increase in price, this increased demand from another country. Let us compare moving from no trade, price of 4, to a free trade price either of 2 or 6. With a free trade price of 2, we're going to have imports. Domestic consumers are the beneficiaries, as we said earlier, consuming 600 units at a price of 2. Consumer surplus value is increasing by 1,000. Producer surplus value is decreasing by 600. And the net change in total surplus value would be 400. We can easily see the alternative scenario of a price of 6, which will increase the producer surplus value from 800 to 1800, and the consumer surplus value will decrease from 800 to 200. So the total surplus value again is increasing to 2000. Consumers seeing their surplus value going down by 600 and producers increasing by a thousand giving us a net difference of 400 so we have a change in total surplus value of 400